Sign this petition unless you want it to end up where the sun don't shine. I'll do whatever you want, just don't hurt me. I owe you one. Shake a leg. Before I begin this review, there's a few things I have to get out of the way. The most important being that the reason this review is actually out on time, or close to it, hopefully, is that I was given a review code for this game, which I am thankful for, but absolutely does not change my opinion on the game. The second thing to get out of the way is that I was given an email of a list of things that are being added to the 1.0 patch, which actually fix some of the problems I have with this game. But ultimately, none of the biggest problems will be fixed. So just understand, I can only review what I've been given. The game will certainly improve over the next few patches, and, and I'm fairly confident that running with scissors will fix most of the major glitches in time, but certainly not in the next couple days. I also want to make it clear that I'm actually a pretty big fan of Postal 2. It was one of the first videos I ever made on YouTube a couple years ago, and that's why it's so painful to have to make a negative review for this game. That doesn't mean it's a bad game, it's really not, and I imagine when they fix most of those bugs, it'll be a pretty good game, but it is not the sequel that Postal 2 fans were waiting for, trust me. And I will go into it in detail, but if you're just here for a no-spoilers review, I'm saving all the spoilers for the end outside of detailing certain weapons and items and some of the politics or lack thereof. It's kind of unavoidable to talk about those things, but as for the game's missions and the plot events, that's all at the end. So, without further ado, let's talk about why Postal 4 is a massive disappointment. So I think the first thing that I should talk about, because it's the main reason that you shouldn't buy this game at launch, is the very substantial list of bugs and performance issues in this game. I'm not going to pretend that Postal 2 was a flawless game. It certainly was somewhat buggy and still is even after who knows how many patches. But it's not this bad. Postal 2 is perfectly playable from beginning to end on most PCs. And the sad reality is Postal 4 is extremely unoptimized. I'll remind you that my graphics card is an RX 5700, my CPU is a Ryzen 5 3600, so it certainly should be able to run this fucking PS2 looking game with no problems. Instead, I get constant frame rate drops and stuttering unless I lower the settings to medium across the board, and even then, you can't have the population density set to overpopulated without the whole thing fucking going to shit at random times. And even with my settings at medium, there are several points in the game where the frame rate just shits the bed and I can't even figure out why. I'm assuming it's some physics object interacting with something else and it's fucking everything up. But that was one constant throughout my playthrough. Another huge one that's going to come up constantly are the long load times. Despite being installed on SSD like all my games always are, it can take up to 15 seconds to load a new area, and there are several loading zones on the map, like Postal 2. 15 seconds is a long time, guys. Since I've basically been doing all my gaming on PC over the last few years, and even now the modern consoles finally have SSDs, I don't think I've played a game with load times this long since probably Bloodborne, and that game had notoriously long load screens. And that's just the performance issues, guys. There's a crazy amount of bugs in this game. I actually wrote an entire list in my notes, but I'm going to limit this section just to the most important ones, otherwise it would be at least five minutes long. I'm going to try to provide video evidence for as many of these as possible, but remember, I'm on a bit of a time crunch, so forgive me if I miss a couple that I mention in this list. So, we've got audio desync and cutscenes, which happened to me three or four times. Hello there, Mr. Warden. How are things in the old pokey? Ah, damn it! You better watch who you're stinking up on, punk, or else I'll lock you up with the rest of this monkey spunk. You can get stuck inside objects, which you could also do in Postal 2 fairly easily, but the difference being in Postal 2, they had an unstuck feature, which once the game detected you were stuck inside an object, would simply teleport you outside the object. 
I don't know why they wouldn't think to add this back in, especially when the game is clearly still unfinished. Another thing that was annoying is every time I loaded up the game, except ironically the very last time I loaded it up, so maybe they patched this recently, but every time I would start up the game, my mouse sensitivity would reset, and subtitles doesn't even seem to work. I flipped the thing on and off multiple times and I don't have any subtitles in my footage. There are invisible objects in several points of the map. I noticed specifically there's a house near the Mexican border that has no furniture inside, but you can bump into invisible furniture. And along the same lines, there are invisible walls in places there clearly shouldn't be. There was one in the mall near the end of the game that actually blocks you off from grabbing health packs. Another bizarre one is that vehicle explosions are delayed. If you throw a grenade or shoot a rocket next to a vehicle, it won't explode until a full half second later. It is very distracting. Here, catch. This one is another annoying one that seems like it'd be easily fixable if they play tested. You have to crouch to go upstairs in some buildings. In fact, there's one building that had an invisible wall at the top of the stairs, and there was nothing even in that building, which is a completely different complaint that's technically not a bug. But yes, there are a decent amount of buildings in this game, especially the affluent area on the east side of town, where there's no ammo, no guns, no health inside, which is half the appeal of Postal's world, is that you're supposed to explore for supplies and to maybe find a weapon that you can't normally get until a later day in the week. That was a huge part of the reward system for exploring in Postal 2. This is another huge one. You can straight up clip through walls and a lot of objects have absolutely no collision. There's a secret bunker in the Mexico part of the map and I never found the code for it, but guess what? You can jump straight through the wall directly to the right of it. I don't know if this qualifies as a bug, but I noticed that checkpoints aren't saves in this game. What that means is, is that instead of, you know, reloading your previous state, it just teleports you back to wherever the checkpoint was made, and all the enemies that just killed you are still standing around where you just died. Now, you could argue this is actually a good thing in your favor, but sometimes it's not. There's a mission in the game where you have to slingshot some people over the border, and I died right near the end of it because I purposely got detected by Border Patrol to see what would happen. And when I respawned, I had 20 guys shooting at me at the same time. Very annoying. This is a huge one that I really, really hope they fix by launch. The scooter race, which sucks absolute ass by the way, shouldn't be in the game, doesn't give you a reward. I got the top time on the board, it even gives you a snarky Big Rigs reference, but I didn't actually win anything, as far as I can tell. I don't think there was any money added to my inventory, no item, nothing. And as the cherry on top in the end, the very last line of dialogue by Postal Dude in the game is not dubbed by Rick Hunter, the original voice, which they just recently added to the game. This game is very buggy, it feels unfinished. There are several buildings across the map that have nothing in them. Some of them don't even have finished textures, but they're there. They had no problem giving this build to the press, and I highly doubt the 1.0 version of the game will finish all this unfinished crap. And even if it does, now we get to the part of the video of why Postal 4 will never be as good as Postal 2. But because I just heavily criticized a part of the game, first I'll talk about some positives. Because fortunately, the gameplay, of course, is the best part of the game. People don't play Postal 2 for its complex shooting mechanics. They play it because you can do over-the-top, edgy shit. Like setting people on fire, or decapitating them, or pissing on them. And what you're doing is actually not as important as how you're doing it. For example, it's one thing to say that you used a flamethrower to set somebody on fire. It's another thing to say you poured gasoline on them and threw a match. Another example is you could say you put a silencer on your gun. But in Postal, that means shoving a cat on the end of your muzzle. Even decapitation is more fun when you're doing it with a hedge trimmer or a machete that's bouncing off of five different walls. Or maybe you just want to smash somebody's head with a sledgehammer. So how does Postal 4 compare to Postal 2 in that regard? 
Well, I hate to say it, but this is the first of many downgrades. I will say it's still fun. You can still do most of the things I just said, except for some reason there's no weapon that can smash people's heads, which sucks. I love doing that. But you can still piss on anybody you want, kill anybody you want, set them on fire, etc, etc. But you can tell that the game has a lot more of a goofy tone instead of a 2000s trench coat wearing edgelord. A couple examples of the reduced edginess and increased goofiness is that one, burning people to death no longer creates a charred corpse. That effect simply isn't in the game. Another example is when an enemy dies, they ragdoll, which might seem funny at first, but they take it way too far. They added a new power-up called Vitamin X, which improves all your melee attacks, but more importantly, it makes your kick send enemies flying. Emphasis on flying, it doesn't send them 10 feet backward. No, it's like you're fucking punting a football. They fly spinning through the air, which is kind of funny the first couple times you do it, but again, it contributes to that tonal shift that makes this not a true sequel to Postal 2, trust me. But to get back to the positivity for a little bit, I will say they improved some aspects since Postal 2. You can now aim down sights, which thankfully doesn't actually make weapons more accurate, but it reduces the recoil, so it does have a function, but it's not required if you prefer the old style of shooter that was all hip fire and a lot more faster paced. Another improvement is the addition of Sprint, which was certainly necessary given that this game's world is probably quadruple the size of Postal 2's. So you have infinite Sprint at least, that certainly helps. What helps even more is the addition of these mobility scooters scattered throughout the map. They're the only type of vehicle that you can ride because I'm assuming they were continuing the joke of every car in town being a explosive prop. The scooters go a little bit slow, but I suppose that's necessary given how badly this game runs anyway. But at least you can use handguns while riding it, that's kind of fun. And they also added in a weapon wheel, which, again, these games have a shit ton of weapons. Postal 2 actually had even more weapons than this game does, so it certainly could have used it. So let's talk about some of those weapons, at least the more interesting ones. You have a lot of weapons you would certainly expect, like handguns couple shotguns, assault rifles, but there's not much to say about those except they mostly feel good. I'll say the P350 handgun is extremely weak and borderline useless though. I played this game on hard and Postal 2 is notorious for having like 10 difficulties. The press build for Postal 4 only went up to hard, so that's the difficulty I played, and it was still too easy all the way up until the end of the game. And at that point, I really wasn't actually trying that hard. If you min-max healing items and all the different drugs, this game becomes extremely easy. And you don't play this game for the difficulty. Just to be clear, you play it for the stupid shit you can do, like I said before. So let's talk about melee weapons. Postal 2 was infamous for having a shit ton of melee weapons. And unfortunately, they've cut down the number quite a bit. Admittedly, quite a few of these overlapped in their function, but they usually had some unique little flavor to them that made them fun. I'll go over the list of weapons they cut out last, because I want to save the ranting for the end. Let's just get through this. So, in Postal 4, we've got a shovel, a mop, a stun baton, the machete from Postal 2, a chain sickle, which is probably the most fun of the new ones, and a foam hammer. Yeah, that's it. And the machete is just a shittier version of the machete that was in Postal 2. As for the chain sickle, this one's kind of creative, so I'll give him credit for that one. Essentially, it has two different modes. You can either throw the sickle or throw the weighted side. The sickle can pull off people's limbs, including their head. And of course, dude makes a Mortal Kombat reference. Get over here. And the weighted side is non-lethal and makes enemies ragdoll, so that one's actually kind of fun. Near the end of the game, you get access to a chainsaw, again like Postal 2, but unlike Postal 2, it's really only used for entertainment purposes. As for handguns, the only one that actually matters is the revolver, which is one of the best weapons in the game. It's a one-hit headshot. I'm sure it's going to be one of the main weapons you use on the higher difficulties. And just like Paradise Lost, 
the Postal 2 expansion. Killing enemies with it builds up a meter that you can use to pull off a high noon and chain headshot auto-aim multiple enemies at the same time, which, you know, is pretty cool and satisfying. I'm glad they brought that back. As for the medium category, it's just one shotgun and two assault rifles. Shotgun feels pretty good. At close range, it blasts people's heads off. No other comment, really. The heavy category has the most diverse range of weapons. Having a machine gun, sniper rifle, quad barrel shotgun, rocket launcher, and a squirt gun that can shoot water, piss, which makes people throw up like Postal 2, or gasoline, which you can light and it's a flamethrower. All these weapons are decently fun to use, but I'll say that the rocket launcher is a major downgrade from Postal 2's version. In Postal 2, the rocket used fuel instead of rockets as ammo, meaning that you could charge it as long as you wanted. And when you released, it would fly a certain distance based on how much fuel you gave that rocket. If you charged it all the way, it turned into a homing rocket. So you could use it as a close range weapon and fire off a whole salvo of rockets because there was no reloading. That's another major change in Postal 4 is that now you actually do reload guns which further makes the rocket launcher shitty because you have to reload after every shot and the explosion is also has a significantly smaller damage radius, you can tell. Why didn't they just do the same thing again? It's not like anything else in this game is realistic. How is it that the rocket launcher from 19 years ago is better than the one in the new game? All right, I'm just gonna hold back the rant for later. Let's move on. Then we got the last two weapon categories, which are throwables and miscellaneous. The new addition of the pigeon mine is pretty interesting. You just throw a box of pigeons and they attack enemies and kill them. It's also a reference to a plot point in the game that honestly I don't really like because it was a huge missed opportunity, but we'll get to that later. Let's just say conceptually a bunch of pigeons attacking people is cool. So in a vacuum, there's nothing inherently wrong with this list of weapons. I think it covers most of the unique ways of killing people in the postal games. So on its own, it's not really a problem. It's more like just in comparison to Postal 2, it feels lacking, especially the melee weapons. So here, I'll read you out a list of all the missing weapons. Knuckle dusters, the butterfly knife, hedge trimmers, a hand axe, scissors. And given that the company's literally called running with scissors, how could they not have scissors as one of the fucking melee weapons? <laughs> anyway, we've got the baseball bat, the scythe, Sledgehammer, Weed Whacker, Diseased Cowhead, which I can't believe they didn't bring back something like that. The Grenade Launcher, Napalm Launcher, Weapon of Mass Destruction, Beanbag Minigun, and the Mini Nuke Launcher. I don't need to break these down in detail. I think it's pretty evident what each one of these does simply by the name. And I also don't think I need to explain how much variety having this many weapons adds to the game. Even if some of them do the same thing, not all of them do, and most of them have a unique quirk. So yeah, this is disappointing. <sighs> Alright, so now let's talk about the consumable items. Good news is, pretty much all of them are back from Postal 2, and even a couple of the returning ones have new functions too, so this is probably the best handled aspect of the game. Let's just talk about some of the fun ones. Probably the most infamous is the crack pipe. Yes, Postal Dude smokes crack, and it heals you to past full health to 125. If you don't smoke another one within like five minutes, you take damage later on. Though the benefit way outweighs the cost, and in Postal 4 it actually heals over time instead of instantly, but as an additional bonus, it actually heals the entire 125 health. So you can take it while getting shot at and still overheal. Then we've got catnip, which is probably the most powerful item in the game. Smoking catnip slows down time. Alternatively, you can use catnip to attract cats, which is the next item on our list. Like I mentioned earlier, cats can be used as silencers on certain guns. Unfortunately, unlike Postal 2, the cat does not die from this, which is fucking stupid. You're firing bullets through its body. In Postal 2, after you would fire a certain amount of rounds, it would fly off the muzzle and then explode. In Postal 4, it fires off your gun and then just walks away fine. Which is fucking stupid because the other functions for the cat, because it actually did add some new functions, still kill the cat. 
Like, for example, you can shove a grenade up the cat's ass now, and it turns it into a homing grenade. And of course, the cat explodes, which makes sense. So that's kind of fun. Then we've got Akimbo Power, which used to be called Habib's Power Station. Like the new name implies, you can wield two guns at the same time. It doesn't work for every gun, but it works for every gun that matters, trust me. And the benefit to Akimbo Power is that you don't have to reload during it, so this actually makes the rocket launcher a lot better. Obviously, this combined with the catnip is extremely overpowered and trivializes the game. But again, you're probably not playing Postal for difficulty. Vitamin X is a new one, which I explained before. That's the one that improves all your melee attacks and makes your kicks send people flying. So yeah, it's fun. I still think it's a little too goofy for the tone I was hoping this game would go for, but it does fit for the one the game has. The rest of the items aren't really that noteworthy, so this section ended up being longer than I wanted it to be, but I hope you understand the point of the comparisons between Postal 2 and Postal 4. I'll admit some of the weapons added were from Paradise Lost, which came out all the way in 2015, 12 years after the game's original release. So it's not a 100% fair comparison, but I think it gets the point across. Even though on the surface the gameplay is very similar to Postal 2, the devil is in the details. When you burn someone alive in Postal 2, they're screaming as they're dying, they stop shooting you, Eventually they fall on the ground and cry and slowly die and get a charred human flesh texture on their body so you might actually feel something. In this game, not only can they still shoot at you while they're on fire, but when they run out of health, they just ragdoll. You feel nothing. You might even laugh. And by extension, this applies to the rest of the gameplay too. I'm gonna completely skip the open world section. Long story short, the open world is way too big, parts of it are unfinished, and like some other open world games made over the past decade, it just feels like a huge loading screen in between missions. Postal 2's world was compact, it had a lot of secrets, each day of the week spawned new weapons in secret locations and new supplies, and it had a huge secret optional level where you fight your way through an Al-Qaeda base and get rewarded with the weapon of mass destruction. Postal 4 has basically none of this. It's much more visually diverse than Postal 2's world as is expected by the much larger budget and there are a few really cool locations you visit during the story that I'll go into later, but the open world just kinda sucks. I don't need to talk about it in further detail than that, trust me. So let's get to the political angle, because you can't talk about Postal without talking about politics. There's a reason I titled my Postal 2 review the most offensive game ever made. So to explain why it was so offensive for the time, let me set the stage. The year is 2003, it's less than two years since 9-11, and apparently some edgelords decide that for their game, one of the main enemy types and regular NPCs that you see around the town of Paradise is Al-Qaeda. Now, every Muslim in the game is a potential enemy with an assault rifle up their ass. They attack a church over the course of the game. HOLY SHIT! And I don't think I need to explain that part too much further in detail to understand why that would be, you know, kinda edgy, obviously. There's also a level that is directly inspired by the Waco Siege, where the ATF killed 25 children and two pregnant women. So of course, Running With Scissors thought this would make a perfect level for our 2000s edgelord game. And most of the enemy groups in the game are organizations that you piss off that were relevant at the time. Like hippies who want to protect the forest by burning down a library or parents that are against violent video games so they storm the RWS office and try and kill everybody inside, rednecks that also happen to be gay ra- <laughs> for some reason. Obviously it's not some kind of deep, well thought out commentary, it's just simple hypocrisy of the human condition, and it's certainly not meant to be read into too much because at the end of the day, Postal 2 is a somewhat goofy game, but it's also an edgy game. So knowing that, you would expect Postal 4 would have some Commentary on social issues of the last 10 years, you would think, right? Well, you'd be wrong. You'd be horribly, horribly wrong. 
They fucked it up. I don't know if running with scissors are just a bunch of cowards now. Maybe they've forgotten the entire appeal of Postal 2. Maybe they thought they wouldn't be able to sell their game and, and Postal 4 is meant to be nothing other than a cash grab. I don't know. I can't say for certain, but I can tell you there's basically no political commentary here. In fact, in some cases, it's almost anti-commentary where they're avoiding a very obvious joke. A good example of this is that Postal 4 has its own version of COVID called the Pigeona virus, as in it comes from pigeons. You'd think that's some kind of setup to a joke, it's really not. I guess they just thought it would be funny if it came from pigeons instead of bats. But guess what, instead of turning this into one of the enemy groups in the game being, I don't know, maybe Chinese spies or some kind of over-the-top caricature that would clearly be considered racist in this day and age of Chinese people, well, instead of that, they just made it so the Mexican cartels made it. Why? I don't fucking know. Again, it's not really a setup to any joke. They just have a Bane clone in a cutscene, and it's not funny at all. There's no Bane posting, which you would expect, again, from a company that made an edgy game like Postal 2. And even Bane posting is like 10 years old at this point. No, it's just a guy who looks like Bane and has a voice changer to make his voice sound cool, but he sounds like a nerd. The plague of the border. And the wrestling is eating, son. That's not fucking funny. So what about the virus itself? Is there any commentary on how American citizens treated the virus? Kind of, but not really. Because this game was in development during COVID, I'm wondering if maybe they made a prediction but couldn't change it later. But what happens in the game is that on Tuesday when the virus spreads, everybody starts wearing masks. Okay, fair enough. And then on Wednesday, everybody stops wearing masks. Now, part of me wants to say this was actually supposed to insult the right and say the average American is an idiot and we should have all been wearing masks for two years straight. Actually, no, it doesn't say anything at all unless I miss some side quest or some radio conversation that mocked them. But in terms of the actual story, no, it's just kind of forgotten about. And so it doesn't really hit hard for either side of the aisle and it doesn't reflect reality at all because people are still wearing masks now. So to bring up another thing that disappointed me on this angle, in Postal 2, like I mentioned, there were a lot of groups that you pissed off over the course of the game, and then at the end, everybody's trying to kill you as the apocalypse starts. It's pretty much the perfect climax for what the game was trying to say. Postal Dude was a character who hated his life, his wife is a bitch to him the entire game. He has to do these mundane chores. He gets fired on the first day of the game. And while he's certainly somewhat of a goofy character with off-color one-liners throughout the game, I think it's just supposed to reflect that he's given up on life at this point and uses humor to mask his pain and he had some kind of psychological break and that's why he's killing all these people. And at the end of the game, spoilers if you haven't played Postal 2, obviously, the dude shoots himself because he can't take living with his wife anymore. Does Postal 4 have a tone anywhere near this? Fuck no. It's just a meme game now. So you might be wondering, what is the humor replacing the edgy or sometimes political humor from Postal 2? Mostly just sex jokes. And listen, I don't have a problem with sex jokes, they can be funny sometimes. But when that's the entire basis of your humor, it can very quickly turn to Reddit humor. There's a mission in this game where Postal Dude turns into a cat. He doesn't actually turn into one, the implication is that he hallucinates being a cat after inhaling some fumes. And part of the mission is you have sex with a female cat. This could have been funny, if we saw even just one frame of the dude sticking his dick in a cat, unfortunately, all we have is the implication. Much like a lot of other missions in this game, it just kind of happens and has nothing to do with the rest of the game. It's a lol so random humor. It fucking sucks. But yeah, this was basically an overly long explanation to say that the game is not even slightly edgy in any way, and you can't argue that Postal 2 wasn't edgy and didn't push boundaries for what video games could talk about. 
And now Postal Force says absolutely nothing. Nothing about minorities, nothing about women, nothing about the LGBT people, nothing about the alt-right, nothing about internet culture, and it doesn't have to pick a side, but it does have to, at the very least, poke fun at these things. You can't ignore them, otherwise your game fucking sucks. It's like a shitty version of Saints Row. Not even good Saints Row. So since this video is probably way too long at this point, I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of the story and how the story objectives continue into the game proper because this is yet another big flaw with the game that is not going to be fixed. So as a frame of reference, let me give you Postal 2 again. So the main game of Postal 2 before the expansions takes place over the course of five days and in each day you have to complete a series of mundane objectives. Though of course, true to the game's name, usually the events spiral out of control and you have to kill a bunch of people. These objectives can be as simple as going to buy milk, picking up your paycheck, pissing on your dad's grave, and many of these objectives turn into linear, hallway shooter-esque levels. Now as for Postal 4, it takes the same basic concept, but where Postal 4 goes wrong is that most of these objectives are not linear levels, and they're also not ultra basic things that you can complete over the course of a couple minutes, but they're extended far beyond their welcome or they're given some really annoying minigame. Now the biggest fuck up right at the beginning is that Monday has the worst jobs in the game. Yes really, the beginning of the game is the worst part of the game. Specifically one of the levels, the sewer level, is so goddamn boring, I suspect people are gonna quit the game during that mission. It is awful, it goes on way too long. And there's no jokes throughout the entire thing. Unless you count shooting giant piles of shit as a joke. It even has giant rat enemies, the most generic thing you could possibly imagine being in a video game, and it doesn't even lampshade that either. As for the other two objectives, you have to capture some cats and dogs because some hillbilly wants to eat them, again dodging a very easy joke where they could have had a Chinese guy eating them, which absolutely would have fit in Postal 2. As for the third objective, that's the only decent one. You work as a prison guard, and the warden likes shooting people, which is kind of funny. But I don't even think they imply he likes shooting black people. That's how fucking safe this game is. It's kind of pathetic. The game starts to pick up a bit on Tuesday, but again, that border smuggling job sucks ass. Imagine if you were working for Border Patrol and were using it to deport illegals. That would be edgy and funny. The only traditional Postal 2 mission out of the list is you have to pay a fine, but in this game's case, you have to do it through community service by kicking parking meters and writing up fines. But what makes this a Postal 2 mission is that you can instead just deposit your unpaid fine in the deposit box, and then you have to fight your way outside the police station as it goes on lockdown. And it's fun, a legitimately good mission. Then there's a mission where you have to spray over gang signs, and instead of fighting the Mexican gangs there, you fight SJWs, and that is probably the only legitimate modern political commentary in the entire game. It'll be even better too. You know, I've been working on my wrist technique to get a really smooth blending of the colors. Do my eyes deceive me? Is that white male culturally misappropriating the techniques of this land's beautiful indigenous minorities? And as much as I would like to ramble on about all the rest of each day's objectives, I really don't have time to cover them all. This video is already going to take way too long to edit. I can see that now. So sorry for the poor transition, let's just get to the conclusion. Fuck this game. This is not a sequel to Postal 2. It's like some shitty spin-off made by a different company that didn't want to be offensive. Missing the point that Postal 2's appeal was that it was fucking offensive. I absolutely believe the reason that Running With Scissors made this game is because they were running out of money. There's no other reason. It's probably the same reason they made Paradise Lost, an expansion for Postal 2 that came out 12 years after it released. They needed money, so they made this game. Difference is, they're giant cowards and don't want to offend anybody, so they just made it a quirky Reddit game where you can kick people flying 100 feet into the air. 
burning people alive isn't satisfying anymore. Pissing on people isn't really that funny anymore. And it doesn't really fundamentally improve on Postal 2. Honestly, on some level, I could live without this game being offensive if it was more fun. But it's actually less fun than Postal 2. That's what kills me. It almost makes me think Postal 2 was unintentionally good. Because the level design here is way weaker, partially because the map is so much larger. Postal 2's Town of Paradise was pretty cramped in certain areas, but the areas themselves were still fairly large, so there were a lot of secrets you can find in buildings, and you could platform to secret zones and get weapons early. There was that huge optional level that was the Al-Qaeda base. The sewers in town were shortcuts between the various zones. Postal 4 doesn't have any of this. The sad part is, I feel like people are going to praise this game just because they never played Postal 2 and just think it's absurdly funny the same way Saints Row 3 is funny and that you can just do stupid over-the-top shit. But that was only part of why Postal 2 was funny and fun, for that matter. Postal 2 is a one-of-a-kind game. You can't really play another game like it. There's a part of me that really hopes that they turn this game around. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm sure they're going to add a bunch more content and iron out some of the glitches, but you can't patch in a new story and new objectives and suddenly make it offensive. I don't even know why they bothered putting social justice warriors in the game, considering they only show up one time and it doesn't really fit the humor of the rest of the surrounding game. Maybe to pretend that they still had a little bit of that edge left? I don't know, I can't say for certain. All I know is I'm tired of reviewing disappointing modern games I said I was going to take a break from this, but honestly, I had no idea Postal 4 was about to come out until a couple weeks ago. So I promise you this time, I'm going to make three positive gaming videos before I make a single another negative video game review. I'm still going to review the rest of the Halo show because honestly, that was kind of fun. I even bought Fall of Reach and I'm probably going to read it before I review the next episode so that I have a bit of the book perspective as well on this. But other than that, I don't have too much else to say. I'll see you next time, guys.